So I'm a very firm believer in giving the people what they want. And if you want more Chronicles of Valyria coverage, you've got to let me know because recently there's been quite a few people saying, oh, you're beating a dead horse. Stop making videos about this. Nobody cares. If you do care, leave a like on the video. Prove the haters wrong. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know. I'm half joking there, but actually do interact with the video. It does help out a lot. And basically, I'm going to be going over the blog post today. It's mostly text, so it might be a little bit dry. I thought I'd sweeten the deal a little bit. So if you followed Chronicles of Valyria for a while, if you followed my coverage, you'll have heard me talk about PPP loans before because it's something that in America, when coronavirus was a thing, oh wait, it still is, they basically was giving small loans to businesses if you've been affected by coronavirus. You could apply, they'd give you, and I'll quote here so I don't get this wrong, up to 2.5 times the average 2019 monthly payroll cost. So basically, you get all your employees, average out their, their um, yearly compensation, their yearly wage, and then they would give you 2.5 times that amount. Chronicles of Valeria, Soulbound Studios, Jeremy Walsh, applied for this and they got one to the tune of $254,700. They got this in April of 2020, the end of April 2020, and obviously this is not new news we've talked about before, but never super in-depth. So why am I bringing this up now? It's because obviously it's been a whole year since they got this money, and this is all the money that this company ha has. If you remember back in March of 2020, they fired all their employees, citing the reason for doing so, we don't have money anymore. We're, we're totally out of money. So they had no money then. They got 254 grand. We're going to go over now because I've read a little bit of this blog post already. They have five employees. Now, I'm not great at math, but something doesn't quite add up here. Where's the rest of the money coming from? The, are these actually full-time salaried employees? Either way, if we're looking for transparency from Chronicles of Valeria, we're not going to get it. But we will get them saying we're being transparent because everyone who's a liar always claims to be transparent. So let's start going over it. Welcome to our first milestone retrospective. These are intended as a look back at our previous milestone. And in the interest of transparency, got you. Talk in greater depth about the things that worked, the lessons learned from the things that didn't work, and the always important small victories. So this is called Taking Stock KOE Milestone 1 Retrospective. Now, real quick, if you're missing a bit of context here, we're talking about Chronicles Valeria, which is a C. Why are they talking about KOE? It's because they're making a game called Kingdoms of Valeria. Now, obviously, if you look at this under the lens of someone who's cognizant that this is all a Fugazi, Fugazi, however that's pronounced, then obviously this doesn't make a lot of sense because everything said in here is a lie. But we're obviously going to look at it based on the merit of what they're saying and then compare it to what we know just so we can get everything out there and everyone gets all the key context. So let's start. The game plan. COE development is moving forward quickly and consistently with the core team. Currently, there's five people in the project, including myself as our sole engineer, our former lead designer known as Snipe Hunter, our former lead technical artist known as Irreverent, our former sound engineer, and our former composer. Now, they've not really talked about or mentioned Chronicles of Valyria for months and months now because they've been working on Kingdoms of Valyria, a game that is, as far as I can tell, a standalone, like, banished kind of game where you can skip forward time and control units. But it's so early on in development that you can't really control units because they don't fucking move. They don't do anything. They just stand there. And if you've been following along with this, I didn't cover these because it made me want to uh, it made me want to throw my monitor through the window. But this guy is writing like essays about Fog of War and releasing whole videos talking about Fog of War as if this is like the most revolutionary game mechanic that's ever existed. Now, obviously, again, to mention, we're cognizant of the fact that this is all a charade. This is theatre. This is Caspian sat there doing fucking sock puppets to show that they're making a game. He's entertaining the, the, the court system, essentially, if it comes to that, if the court case does make it actually in front of a judge. That's all that's going on here. So basically, I don't understand the allocation of money here either. You've got one engineer, one lead designer, one artist. Makes sense so far sound engineer and and composer doesn't really make a lot of sense when two out of five of your employees are working on music for a game it's it's a little bit odd but you know what do i know so we've switched our milestone priority to focus on domain settlement and land management first now returning to adventure mechanics afterwards this allows us to focus on key areas that prove most engaging to our current backers to ensure we've completed design de decisions on some of the most unique selling points of coe and to spend our time moving the needle forward on coe's development in a way that aligns best with our resources now if i was a cynical man 
which I am, I would say that saying this allows us to focus on key areas that proved most engaging to our current backers is basically saying we are going to deliver you the land you bought but in a different game uh, and for what's most engaging to our current backers what engaged our backers that was buying land in the game and buying titles so if i was a cynical man i'd say that this is giving up the game a little bit to ensure we've completed design decisions on some of the most unique selling points of coe it's that little nudge of we're we're giving you what we said we were gonna sell you you know what i mean so kingdoms earlier dating all the way back to 2016 has been advertised as a standalone user experience intended to test and validate the domain settlement and land management mechanics of chronicles of Lyria. beginning in 2017 koe was retroactively added to the list of backer awards available to anyone with an Illyrian pledge package or higher so all the way back in 2016, they were talking about Kingdoms of Lyria. This is factual. I've shown it in videos before on the Wikipedia page, but it was supposed to come out in like 2018. They literally said this was due to come out in like, I think it was mid 2018. We're now in 2021. And if you've seen the gameplay footage, I'll show some on screen. It's literally, this is like one developer made this in, in two or three days. It, it's just some, some Unity assets from the asset shop just put into a little area and it's running at like fucking seven fps and all that works in the game like they've even said themselves the milestones the milestones are like make the ui work make fog of war make you be able to move the camera make npcs be able to move like it's just some ridiculous shit like stuff that you'd have in the game originally so they've definitely done almost no work to this. So the amount of footage that they've shown and what they've done is, is frankly shocking, honestly. I'm pretty sure a small indie studio with a couple employees could make something better than this in a couple of weeks. But what do I know? I'm not a game de designer, not a game developer, but it does from everything I've read, everything I've seen, everything people have told me seem to be like this is just really, really easy to do. So Kingdoms of Lyria, while still a tool for validating COE's domain settlement and land management mechanics and being, and this is bolded by the way, freely available to all existing coe backers of course it is is also being released as a standalone title this is being done to ensure a revenue stream for the studio that will enable us to complete chronicles Lyria without having to return to rewards based crowdfunding you couldn't do that anyway you, you've got no chance of returning mate i don't know why you like going with that one but i personally can't wait caspian i'm a big fan can you send me a copy of kingdom kingdoms of Lyria when it's done so i can review it I think you'll be very interested to hear what I've got to say. Additionally, KOE simultaneously expands the Illyria ecosystem and meets the demand for a new approach to the colony sim and grand strategy genres by introducing exciting MMO elements. KOE will have an initial release followed by three free updates. The initial release named KOE Settlements will focus on colony sim mechanics. The first update, KOE Domains, will expand Kingdoms of Illyria to include forex and grand strategy mechanics by introducing travel between settlements and the ability to advance to governing a county duchy or kingdom the second update koe online will introduce the mmo servers allowing people to continue to play offline or join up to 5,000 other players on a server of their choosing the final update koe legacies will be available only to chronicles valeria backers with titles of aristocracy or nobility and will allow them to play simulated histories of their coe server with the settlements and domains they've claimed. We allow them to play simulated histories of their COE server. Nobody's got a COE server. The game doesn't exist. I, I'm confused by this one. Someone will have to let me know what he's talking about. Kingdoms of has been divided up into eight milestones, the roadmap of which have been revealed here. So this is the milestone. I figured I'd just show it real quick because it is honestly ridiculous. So milestone one, they've not even done all the stuff in milestone one, by the way, and this was announced in... 25th of february environment aka add terrain time and temperature fog of war settlement types and requirements ui ux so literally a ui player citizen so your character that you can move around survival foraging and hunting and animal ai all that stuff's not even been put in the game yet since february we're now in in mid-april so that's another good one and then this was the funniest part this is the part that i think people wanted me to react to most Looking back over Milestone 1, barring any unforeseen circumstances, we want to provide you with a retrospective on our development progress roughly every six weeks. We'll also be dissecting the good, the bad, and the ugly with a format we're calling our KDA. Here's how we're going to be using the terms. Kills. The things we killed it on. Dun, 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 it's Caspian. He's killing the game. Deaths. Things we saw, dove for, and ultimately overcommitted on. It's like 
just the entire fucking studio then. As and then assist small incremental improvements that while maybe didn't go according to plan, ultimately will help our success. All right, so let's see how they fucking killed the game. Kills. To begin with, our backend and the first two versions of our ECS entity component system were initially written in TypeScript using the Node.js platform. This was done in order to make rapid progress leveraging the Node.js ecosystem and many ready-made solutions to the challenges of a microservice architecture. We also used TypeScript for the vast majority of our gameplay code. However, in 2019, it became clear during our effort to generate the four different worlds that while TypeScript slash Node.js was horizontally scalable, it didn't scale as well vertically. It also became clear that this was likely to lead to an overall more time-consuming development process, as well as more expensive server fees come launch. So it's good that three years into development, they figured out that they were developing the game wrong. Always good to know. It's no shocker as where their, their money's gone in complete incompetence. Or maybe I'm overreacting. Uh, maybe this is not a big deal. Some developer can let me know in the comments how big of a deal changing this would be. So one of the first goals of Master 1 was to put in place a new .NET based platform and the third version of our ECS. This included porting existing gameplay code from CUE to .NET, including components and systems for things like character information, identities, inventories, and equipment and survival. This is going to be an incremental process, but so far it's gone very smoothly. Performance is looking great, and the migration for away from TypeScript to C Sharp has, for us, rapidly sped up the development process. Likewise, the move from TypeScript to C Sharp was one of the key ingredients to releasing an offline version of KOE, in addition to the online game, as the gameplay code can now fit seamlessly in both the client and the server. I'll put up some gameplay on screen right now of, of Kingdoms of Valyria, and you can let me know if you think the performance is looking great. Because personally, not so much. Speaking of which, another thing we killed it on was our choice to move to Unity for Kingdoms of Illyria Client. This was done for several reasons and we're super happy that we did. We're able to take the vast majority of content created for Siwi and move it into the KOE Client without difficulty, and the game both looks and feels great so far. I bet it does. Looking fantastic. The environment of KOE, while not as dense and lush as Chronicles of Illyria, not only remains true to the world of Illyria, but also matches the overall art style for COE. They're all pre-made art assets, by the way. These are this is the confusing thing about this. Obviously not confusing because I'm aware of what's going on, but it's confusing how, you know, if I was someone who didn't know anything about it being a lie, but I knew the contextual details of what was going on, how the fuck does this make sense? How can it fit the art style when everything... You worked on a game for four years and you had artists, by the way, so presumably in that time you would have made all your own art, you'd have made your own art style. How would Unity Store assets fit your art style? It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Not really. We've made progress on the terrain, trees, and underbrush, characters, creatures, equipment, and tools. One thing you'll note from screenshots and videos is that most buildings are placeholders. These temporary models allow us to interact with structures without having to have the building solution in place yet. We'll be redoing the building in Milestone 3 when we focus on construction and the all-important architecture tool. One of the biggest risks we've taken with KOE is the player sits in and the ability in a colony sim to control a single character. While implementation of the player sits in is complete, it's one of the things we're most interested in getting feedback on, and is a major reason why we're putting out an alpha test as early as we are. We want to make sure it feels right. I can't wait to see people play this game. I can't wait. One of the primary exit criteria of Milestone 1 was commanding your player character to hunt and gather resources for the purpose of survival. Our blog post last week provided plenty of details on resource gathering, as you've probably seen from our videos, you can command your players to chop trees, pick berries, mine stone, and harvest herbs. Fucking wild. I've never seen that before. Much of the animations on these are st still standing at the moment, but the implementations are complete and give us room to move on to Milestone 2, where the NPCs will not only gather resources, but feel compelled to do so in order to survive. So this is going to be a good one. Deaths. What are they admitting that they failed tragically on? So one of the challenges we faced in Milestone 1 was the Fog of War. This guy is so obsessed with Fog of War, he loves it. He loves it. While a simple concept of variation in terrain elevation as well as the ability to change the angle of the camera meant we couldn't use common solutions. Instead, we needed fully 3D volumetric fog. We tested various approaches, but when the performance wasn't what we needed it to be, it began R&D on our own solution. Research and development, by the way. Having made solid progress with multiple algorithms, we're still not entirely satisfied. At the moment, the fog exposes objects and environments based on where the settlement buildings and player character are, but when you move out of range, the fog fully reforms, rather than leaving a semi-visible area behind. The goal is for areas previously exposed to continue to show trees and buildings as they were the last time you saw them, while not showing living creatures or citizens in that area. You're struggling to solve something the Age of Empires solved 
in 1999. Ultimately, we weren't able to resolve the technical issues for Fog of War that was due in Milestone 1 and have moved the remaining work into Milestone 2 to complete. Another area we overcommitted on in Milestone 1 was pathfinding. When we set our exit criteria for Milestone 1, it included animal AI as well as implementation of the survival systems. However, both of these require for best experience functioning pathfinding on the server. Sadly, we failed to allocate enough time for implementing a new .NET pathfinding solution that would work in both our client and server. Once we realized this, we researched potential solutions and began implementation. It's not yet complete, so pathfinding will be completed in Milestone 2, along with the more robust animal AI we plan to do in Milestone 1. So they're already, I know obviously projects go over, over date constantly, but they're already missing three things out of Milestone 1. There's eight things on Milestone 1. They've not got animal AI in properly. Their player citizens don't work properly and their fog of war doesn't work properly. So three out of eight things that they set themselves to do haven't been done and have been moved into Milestone 2 which again will just push the whole thing further down and down and down. But that's obviously if they were actually intending to make the game, which I don't know that they are. The technical obstacles faced due to Fog of War as well as the pathfinding will impact the schedule slightly. Firstly, we're now targeting May for the release of the first alpha test. Cool, we're in April, so pretty soon we'll all get to play Chronicles of Valyria, uh, Kingdoms of Valyria. And by all, I mean hardly anyone, and by... C, I don't think we will because it's under a non-disclosure agreement. Of course it is. Not only that, but with some things slipping from Milestone 1 to 2, that means Milestone 2 has grown in scope. However, conscious of not wishing to push back our first alpha test too much, we've split the scope of Milestone 2 into 2. So now they're making new milestones into Milestones 0.5s. First alpha test will now include all the Milestone 1 work, including that which moved into Milestone 2, as well as the first half of the Milestone 2 work. From there, we'll be releasing periodic updates to the alpha testers so they can see the progress being made as we complete the second half of the Milestone 2 work. Yeah, I can imagine there's going to be lots of people playing. I'm giving you feedback on this one. Assists. While we weren't able to fully implement survival, we were able to get the core survival components in place. So that's four. That's four out of eight. As well as the means to survive in Milestone 2, we're going to be taking those and with the completed pathfinding work, implement the full array of survival mechanics into KOE. We also want to note that while virtually all of the UI is standing artwork for the moment, we did identify what the UI UX for KOE was going to look like and where components were going to be located on screen. You can see some of that in the videos and screenshots as we implemented the survival related UI and notifications. So that's five, five of eight, not fully done. Uh, finally, the biggest assist in Milestone 1 was on the topic of artificial intelligence. Chronicles of Valyria has always used an AI system driven by goals and needs. However, prior implementations and the one we initially began in Milestone 1 required the designers and engineers to strictly define which goals and needs should be considered at any point in time, as well as how the NPC should achieve those goals. But halfway through Milestone 1, we made the decision to scrap the current solution and move over to a more flexible, goal-oriented action planning, GOAP. Unlike GOAT, which is Caspian, the greatest of all time, solution. And while we didn't introduce the action planner yet, saving that for the NPC AI in Milestone 2, we did implement player citizen command handling as a fixed action plan based solution. It works great. With some optimizations, we're excited by what this means for the NPC AI going forward, and we're looking forward to diving into greater depth on this in a future blog. So good going so far, guys. You're really, really inspiring everyone with confidence. Wrapping up in our next Inside Chronicles Valeria video, we'll be taking a look at hunting and the latter half of gathering which will conclude our Milestone 1 coverage. On April 22nd, we'll be hosting our Milestone 2 preview, where we look at what we'll be tackling next, what the exit criteria is, and what we expect to be available in the first playable alpha test of KOE. Okay, so if you just look at this blog post as like a, a, an interested outsider that isn't aware of everything going on, this just looks like a man that's detailing what's going on with his game, and he's been very in-depth about it. What it looks like to me is that he's been told you need to hit on these points you know, say this, um, mention that this is being freely available to all existing COE backers, show you're delivering something, show that you're working on something, let people know how many employees you've got and who the employees are. It really feels like this is in your face, just puppet theater. It feels like this is, you know, they're not playing this game for us. They're playing it for other interested parties that are taking them to court and the court system, should it actually make it that far. It's basically building up a body of work to show, look, we didn't go quiet. We didn't, you know, run away with the money. We're, we're still working on the game, guys. Look, and this is what we've got so far. And hope that that's enough to show someone who's not familiar with video game development that they are still working on it. Which some people, even that play video games and that are within the community that will comment on this video undoubtedly, will say, 
He's, he's still working on the game. What are you talking about? There are still some people that are that fucking far gone. And, and I don't know why, but this to me just looks like, yet again, a lot of words without a lot of substance and just admitting that I've shown this in videos previously, but Kingdoms of Valeria was supposed to release in 2018. So not only could he not deliver an even, even a single alpha of Chronicles of Valeria in four years, nobody played the game ever, by the way, not only could he not deliver that, but a smaller standalone version of the game that they added on later, knowing that they were behind in scope, by the way, knowing that they were multiple years off schedule, they added more work for themselves, promised to give it to people, and then presumably to get more people to back them and give them more money, by the way. So they added on more work for themselves when they knew they were even further behind and then still get to this stage in 2021 where they're working on things that are like the first things you'd put in a game, the first things you'd put in there. So it's obvious that they've just started working on this and they're basically just trying to get something in front of somebody's eyes to fool them and say we are doing it we are delivering and then as soon as the court case got dropped they're just most likely going to vanish unless people are stupid enough to give this guy some money again and give him he's like a fucking cat at that stage if he does just nine lives of crowdfunding but yeah either way thank you very much for watching i stream on twitch if you want to come check that out at some point we do stuff like this on the twitch channel at times go over news articles stuff that doesn't usually make it into videos and play games generally i have a discord server full of cool people who talk and play games together and a patron if you want to support me further. So thank you very much for watching as always. Stay safe out there. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Peace.